So, you want to learn about camera lenses, or at least I'm assuming so because you clicked on this video. If not, this is kind of awkward. I'm not going to tell you to leave, but uh, you know what, stay, we can hang out for a little bit, it's going to be a good time. Hey, what's up everyone, my name is Josh Winiarski, and today we're going to be going over everything you could ever want to know about camera lenses, at least if you're a beginner. Whether you want to get into portrait photography, landscapes, maybe start a YouTube channel, get into filmmaking, whatever it is, we're going to be going over everything you want to know about lenses so you can do that to the best of your ability. Whatever your creative itch is, I'm here to help you scratch it. That sounds really weird. This is definitely going to be a long video, there's no way around it, so go brew a cup of coffee, take a cold shower, do whatever you gotta do because class is in session, we're talking about lenses. What is a 50mm f1.8 lens? How does it differ from something like a 55 to 250mm f5.6 lens? Don't worry, we're going to be covering that. Let's start off with deciphering these crazy names. So let's start with the 50mm f1.8. The 50mm part refers to the focal length of the lens. Now, the term 50mm comes from the distance between where the light converges to the actual camera sensor. You don't really need to know any of that. All you need to know is 50mm is the measurement we use to determine how zoomed in a lens is. So if we look at 10mm for instance, that's super wide. It's good for vlogging, maybe taking landscapes, architecture shots, it gets a ton in frame. 50 millimeters is a little bit more in the middle, good for everyday use, but you're not gonna be shooting sports or wildlife with it. 100 millimeters is a lot farther, we're getting into telephoto range here. You know, maybe you could take some pictures of basketball players or stuff a little bit farther away. And if you go all the way out to like 250 millimeters, you're zoomed in, you're capturing birds, maybe soccer or football players from a long ways away. 250 millimeters is very much a telephoto lens length. Now for the second part of the lens's names, what the heck does f1.8 mean? So f1.8 refers to the lowest aperture number that a certain lens can go to. That still might be confusing, so let's break it down. So aperture refers to how much light is being let in by the lens. A low aperture number like f1.8 is letting in tons of light and is gonna give you a super shallow depth of field. Now a shallow depth of field is awesome for getting a cinematic look with a super blurry background and the subject tack sharp, that's what having a fast low aperture number means. So let me say it one more time. The lower the aperture number, the closer to zero, the less things in focus, the more light being let in, and the blurrier the background. Okay, so now let's look at some example pictures. So here's a shot at 50 millimeters f1.8. See how blurry that background is? Now let's take an identical photo at f10 and you'll notice a lot more things are in focus. That depth of field, the amount of things in focus is greater. So we've got the 50 millimeter f1.8 with a 50 millimeter focal length and an f1.8 minimum aperture. Then we've got the 55 to 250 millimeter, which can actually go from 55 millimeters to 250 millimeters and everything in between with an f5.6 aperture. Hold up. Okay, so it turns out when I was editing this video, I made a mistake. I was going over a lot of stuff, please forgive me. So throughout the video, I say the 55 to 250 millimeter has a minimum aperture of f5.6. I totally forgot, but this is a good learning opportunity. This is a variable aperture lens. So at 55 millimeters, the minimum aperture is f4, but at 250 millimeters, the minimum aperture is 5.6. Most of the lenses I personally use nowadays do not do this. This is called a variable aperture lens, but I'm glad we went over it. You can learn from your teacher's mistakes. Okay, back to the video. You'll notice the big difference here is the 50 millimeter can't zoom in or out. You're stuck at that focal length with this lens. Meanwhile, the 55 to 250 millimeter, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. You've got a lot of different distances you can cover. The 50 millimeter is only 50 millimeters, it's called a prime lens. As a general rule, prime lenses are gonna be faster. So again, they've got that lower aperture, that shallower depth of field, and they're better in low light, and they're also typically a little bit sharper. On the other hand, zoom lenses are gonna be slower, they're not gonna be as good in low light, and they're gonna be a little bit less sharp. Now, take this as a general rule, because a $1,000 zoom lens can certainly be sharper than a $100 prime lens, but with the general same price range, 
Within the same brand, this is a very good general rule to follow. So prime lenses are typically going to result in the very best image, but they're a lot less versatile. You might have to have two, three, or four prime lenses to cover all the focal lengths you want versus a zoom lens that can just cover all of that without changing lenses. It's really important you understand this. These are the two absolute biggest things to look at when looking at different lenses, but there's also a ton of other things to take a look at, so let's blaze through them. So next we're talking about manual lenses versus autofocus lenses. So for your basic DSLR or mirrorless camera that most of you are probably gonna get, you're gonna use autofocus lenses for most of your work. The big difference between these types of lenses is an autofocus lens is gonna focus automatically. When you press down the shutter button, it's gonna pull focus forward, backward, it's gonna lock onto your subject, it's gonna work automatically. This is what you're probably familiar with if you've ever used a point and shoot or when you take pictures of your phone, you're not pulling focus, you're pretty much just pressing a button and the camera's doing the work for you. On the other hand, manual lenses cannot do this. There are no electronics, there's no motor, these lenses are not gonna focus. You're gonna have to turn the focus ring forward and backward in and out to pull focus to your subject. You have to do it all by yourself manually. Now, the advantage to a manual focus lens is it's gonna be cheaper. And especially if you're a filmmaker, sometimes you want absolute control over where you're pulling focus to. If you've ever watched a movie and seen them rack focus from one character's face to the other, super smooth and cinematic like, that's what manual focus lenses are great for. But for the most part, if you're just starting out, you're probably gonna want an autofocus lens. Something that you can just press the button, it'll pull focus, it's gonna nail it 99% of the time, and you're gonna get a beautiful looking image. Manual focus lenses can be a ton of fun, and a lot of the time they are more practical if you really get into filmmaking. But if you're a photographer, or you're starting out, or you're just doing YouTube videos, whatever it is, autofocus lenses are gonna be your best friend. Ha! Making sure you're still awake. I need like a yardstick, like whap, wake up. Class is still going on. All right, do a few stretches with me. Some of these, some of those. Get a, get a little twist, get the back going. And we're gonna resume our session. So on the topic of autofocus lenses, next we're gonna get into different motor types. So there are a ton of different motors out there we're not gonna go over them all, but some are faster than others. So something like a 70 to 200 that you'd use for action photography can pull focus super fast. It's got super strong motors. Others are super quiet and smooth and they can pull focus slowly and quietly. And some are super cheap and obnoxious sounding. For most photographers, the lens motor isn't gonna make a huge difference, but if you're shooting video and you like to record with audio straight out of camera, or maybe a mic on top, there are some lenses that are so loud that if you record video, you are going to hear the lens motor pulling focus in your footage. So it's just something to be aware of. Next, we've gotta cover camera mounts. So this is something people mess up a lot. People message me all the time. They're like, is this lens gonna fit with my camera? Let's get into it. Now, I'm a Canon shooter, so I'm gonna be talking about Canon mounts, but there are different mounts for all kinds of cameras. Just make sure you're buying the right lens for your particular camera. So for Canon, you've got four main lens mounts. You've got EF, EFS, EFM, and RF. EF is gonna be for their full frame DSLRs. EFS is gonna be for their crop sensor entry level DSLRs. EFM is gonna be for their small mirrorless cameras and RF is gonna be for their full frame mirrorless cameras. The cool thing about EF lenses is they've been around for ages, I think ever since cavemen were banging rocks together, there's been EF glass, and they can be adapted to almost any camera. For example, something like the 50 millimeter F1.8 is an EF mount lens. I could put this on a full frame Canon DSLR. I could put it on a crop sensor entry level DSLR. I could adapt it to their small mirrorless cameras and you could even use it on their full frame mirrorless cameras. EFS lenses on the other hand are for Canon's crop sensor entry level cameras. Stuff like the 90D, 80D, 70D, T8i, T7i, T6i, SL3, SL2, SL1, lots of cameras like that. These lenses are great and oftentimes they're a lot cheaper than the EF lenses, but if you upgrade to a full frame Canon camera, you can't take these lenses with you. They will not work on full frame DSLRs. And then you've got mirrorless lenses, which I'm 99% sure you can't convert backwards. 
Not that I think you'd ever want to. Mirrorless is the way of the future. It's all their newest, highest end lenses. You wouldn't want to take them back to an older camera. All you really need to know is not all lenses are going to work with all cameras. So just do a little research, a little Google search, ask someone at a store, or just look it up online to make sure your lens is actually going to fit on your particular camera. Once you've bought a lens or two, this will be super intuitive and you won't even have to think about it. Okay, and another thing to look for in lenses, and this is one of the things I personally weigh very heavily when looking at lenses, is image stabilization, otherwise known as IS. If you're a video shooter like me, IS is money, or at least it's going to make you some, that's for sure. What this is, is it's stabilization within the lens that is going to make every shot you take smoother. So here's an example of me just hand holding a shot without image stabilization. And here's the same shot with image stabilization on. As you can see, that's a significant difference and it matters even more as you get into longer focal lengths. Even if you're not a video shooter, this is going to help you with photos so much as well. If you're shooting in low light, having a lens with image stabilization is going to help you get sharper images in low light because you can lower that shutter speed, take a longer exposure, and keep your ISO down. Again, on Canon, this is called IS. On Sigma lenses, I think it's OS, which is optical stabilization. They're trying to make it confusing for you. It's pretty much the same thing. Some lenses are stabilized, others are not. Okay, we're almost there. I see you, you know, eye in the clock. When's this class gonna be over? We're almost there. We're just gonna talk about a few cosmetic differences. So another thing to look at super quickly is lens diameter. If you ever end up buying filters for your lenses, you'll need to know that each lens has a different lens diameter, which means it's gonna need a different diameter filter. For example, the 50 millimeter f1.8 has a 49 millimeter diameter. It needs a filter of 49 millimeters. Meanwhile, the Sigma 17 to 50 has a lens diameter of 77 millimeters. It needs a 77 millimeter filter. Rather than buy a bunch of different filters for all your lenses, the trick is you buy one for your biggest lens diameter. So for me, that's 77 millimeters. And then you can buy these things called step up rings. It looks kind of funny, but it'll save you money, allowing you to use that giant filter on any lens with an equal or less than diameter. Then we've got lens size plus weight. The best way to showcase this is with two 24 millimeter lenses, the 24 millimeter f2.8 and the 24 millimeter f1.4. Here's the 24 millimeter f2.8. It's small and tiny. People call it the pancake lens. On the other hand, here's the 24 millimeter f1.4. It's big. It's hefty, it's got a giant piece of glass, much different form factor. Now, there's nothing wrong with the pancake lens. That size is super convenient, easy to take with you, but if you see a red ring on a Canon lens, that means it's an L series lens, which is part of their pro lineup, which means it has superb build quality. Oh, and it's also gonna have incredible image quality. L lenses are built like a tank. They can adapt to pretty much any camera and they're weather sealed. So it's gonna actually have a rubber ring right here to prevent water, moisture, dust from getting into your camera. If you're gonna be going on adventures, shooting in the rain and crazy conditions, it might be worth forking over the big bucks for an L-series lens. They're built like tanks. Or you might not need that. You might love the small, tiny little form factor, the 24 millimeter f2.8. Just know that there's a difference between them and a pretty big one. Whew. And I think that just about covers it. If you need to, definitely go back and rewatch some of the previous things. You know, make sure you have a good understanding before you go out and buy some lenses. And of course, if you're still confused or you have any questions or comments, or you just aren't sure if a lens is right for you, definitely hit me up in the comment section down below. I think my subscribers would vouch for me. I'm pretty dang active. I tried to get to just about everyone. Anyways, that's it for me. There's the bell. It's time to go. Class is over. Have fun, stay creative, and I'll see you all in the next one.